What up everyone, it's Doogie. I am finally here at the shop working on getting some stuff done. Actually today is related to this engine here. I d went ahead and decided to build a fuel vaporizer after having great success with my Gatorade bottle one. Basically all I've done here is cut up an aluminum piece and I went ahead and soldered a piece of copper tubing to it. Got a nice valve here for emergency shutoff or right now it's for throttle regulation until I get a throttle body made up. And then up here is wherever we or whatever we decide to put in here. I put the uh, Schrader valve on here for my refrigerant fittings basically and I've been using that to run propane or basically using it also for hydrogen experiments. But it turns out that the vaporizer I'm making is also going to prove to be very useful in these hydrogen experiments. So we're going to get this thing set up and running. I was going to use the air compressor part to load it because I wanted to have the engine under a full load. And um, right now it's not going to work like that. It will, once I get some cash together I guess, get some pulleys and some other parts. These are the pieces I brought to build the vaporizer. I have an aluminum water bottle. I have a couple pieces of copper tubing. This is going to make up the tube in the center that actually goes into the engine. Oh yeah, does this fit on here? No, it's the same size. Well, we'll definitely get to that. Probably just end up using a short piece of rubber hose. Too bad I ran off with all of it. Oh well. So either way, these pieces are actual percolator tubes. I've already cut them to a rough length. So let's get started. Okay, here's the water bottle cut in half. Basically, this tube is going to stand up here in the center. And then these tubes will go in here like this, with the short part pulling air in from the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and drill some holes in the bottom of this, and the sides. We'll get that mocked up. Alright, it's the next day. I was up pretty late working last night. I was trying to do step-by-step -step footage of how I put this together, but the camera batteries died. And it's not my camera, so I didn't have the charger with me, the appropriate one anyway. So this is the finished vaporizer unit. And as you can see on the bottom here, we have our main outlet that goes into the engine. And then looking inside here, you can see we have a Venturi. And then, if you look at the tubes, most of them have an angle on them. The idea is to spin the fuel that's sitting inside the bottom of the bowl. And if it does spin like I hypothesize it will, I actually have a design modification to go with it that will use the action of the spinning fuel to help further vaporize it. I have two tubes that point pretty much straight in. I have two larger copper tubes that act as a secondary. The idea being that it doesn't take as much surface tension to pull a bubble through a smaller hole versus how much it takes to pull through a larger hole. So these smaller tubes are actually for light to medium throttle. I guess if you use enough tubes it'll work for heavy throttle as well and you'll have really efficient vaporization slash atomization. But in this case, these larger tubes, I think I'm going to use them as secondaries. And with my hand over this and blowing through it, there is quite a bit of CFM. This tube here is the fill tube. I actually had a kind of a bowl that attached to it, but I broke it last night when it fell off the workbench. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just a cup and then the fuel sits in the bottom or on the outside of the Venturi. And it bubbles or percolates. And then I have a window that goes on top. 
And so there's about quarter to three eighths of an inch between the top of the venturi and the bottom of the window. It sits in there like that. And then you can look inside. See what's going on. And this cap here, what I'm going to do is actually silicone this in with some caulk because this is actually kind of a safety safety device. If this was to backfire, this should blow out before the whole thing blows up. Anyway, I'm hoping that that's the idea. I have a little test here to see if the caulk I have will actually resist fuel. Since it's not going to be sitting in fuel, I imagine it'll be okay. And you'll notice that this piece of Lexan's got some bubbles and stuff around it. It looks really interesting, kind of like a piece of tree sap. The reason why is because I cut it using a very unorthodox method. I took the other half of this aluminum water bottle and I heated it up until it was pretty much glowing and then I set it on top of the sheet of Lexan and then I put a weight on it and I let it s and I just continued applying heat and I let it sink through until it dropped out the bottom and then I smacked this out from the center of the bottle and I had a cap perfectly shaped almost round. It would have been round if I didn't damage the aluminum water bottle, but almost perfectly round cap that fits snug, but not too tight. The only other thing on here besides all the tubes is this air hole. When you are designing or building any of these, you will always need to have some kind of air hole here you definitely need bypass air especially if there's no other way to allow air into the engine because say the engine's turning really slowly and it tries to fire but it doesn't quite make it and the piston moves back a little bit that would actually apply pressure inside the intake manifold since all these tubes are submerged in fuel that pressure would force the fuel out these tubes and well spray gasoline everywhere so that's why it is imperative that you have a breather hole on these. So now that I've showed you the inside, I'm going to go ahead and silicone the top on, throw a coat of paint on it, and we'll see what it looks like. Here is our completed vapor carb unit. Went ahead and painted it flat black, and then I used white window and door caulking to seal the top Lexan window in. The reason why I did not use two-part epoxy of any kind is because this top window is designed to blow out in the event of a backfire. Bottom sealed up really good. I decided to use JB Weld instead of any further attempts at brazing copper to aluminum there since it was all contaminated. The JB Weld should hold up just fine and I imagine it will resist fuel long enough for several hours worth of testing. So uh, I guess w the only thing left now is to throw it on the engine and see if it works. Okay, here's the vaporizer set up on the engine. I added a couple of air holes. I've already ran this and actually the fuel ate my silicone and blew the top off, but I'll try and run it for you anyway. I have some fuel in here, so I'll put my face mask on, let's give it a go. It works pretty good until the fuel gets pulled up and then it gets pulled over and into the venturi and it chokes out rich.
back to the drawing board. Okay, test number two. Plug the large holes, so all we're running off of is the small tubes. Hopefully I got So now I'm back at the office, and after reviewing everything, we learned quite a bit from our fuel vaporization experiment building this first little unit. We learned that the air ratio to the amount of air being percolated through the fuel, so what amounts to an air to fuel ratio of sorts, does actually matter. And it's important to have some type of vent air, bypass air, instead of just the percolation portions. Now we can sit here and we can build and we can experiment with tubes and sizes and see what makes the engine run good all day long, but at the end of it, if you don't have some type of way to log data or some type of feedback system to see where you're going or set some kind of goal, you might as well just be guessing. So I've been working on developing some electronics that not only control the engine by actuating the throttle and the air bypass, but also take feedback in real time. And this includes the map sensor that I have built here. And this will give us an idea of what the, the vacuum on the intake manifold is. And maybe we can make some type of calibration from that or be able to calculate engine load. I also have these two phase stepper motors. They step about 1.8 degrees a piece. I'm not sure how I'm going to do the encoder feedback, if I'm going to use an encoder or if I'm going to use a pot, but they're pretty heavy duty in actuation, and I was kind of thinking about it, this would work good at, at opening and closing that ball valve that's already on the engine, and then we just have to come up with another valve in our design, and we thought of some, some ball valve ideas or even a sleeve like a cylinder that sits over the whole top of the thing and has slots in it matching with other slots on the outside edge of the cylinder for bleed air and then you just turn the out whole outside of the cylinder slightly to achieve that basically and we'll go over all the new design stuff here in a couple weeks once again this is more or less a, a preview of what's to come um, some other feedback that we're going to have from the engine is an oxygen sensor um, for now we're going to use a narrow band because I don't have the 300 bucks to blow on a wide band O2 setup and donations are gladly accepted. But for now I feel I can get enough resolution out of a narrow band sensor to, to basically figure out where we're at. Wide band O2 sensors are great for measuring the air fuel ratio not only with better resolution but they're more accurate in the richer range of things like 12.5 to 1 air fuel ratio and better. So in this case, since we're not doing performance, that's not as big of a factor. And that narrow band actually gives us more of a reading in that leaner sweet spot, which is kind of the one we're looking for, because we obviously don't want to go too lean, but we want to know at what bypass air ratio to throttle ratio makes it too rich. Well, I hope you enjoyed my fuel vaporizer design build and test. I'm sorry that there was a lot of lost footage in there. Making it up to the shop when it's this cold outside, you always forget to bring something like batteries or a camera or chargers. At any rate, I will have more coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm working on sketching up a new design, hopefully in Google SketchUp, so that way I can post it to my website, you can download it, and you can kind of look at it a little more in depth. I've been working with my buddy Dave. He's very good at fabrication and taking things from kind of a design and thought to, well, not only something tangible, but production as well. He's familiar with casting aluminum and stuff like that, so that's kind of right up our alley and we'll definitely get more into that as time goes on. 
One thing I wished I could have included was footage of the Gatorade bottle working the engine. And I completely forgot it the night I went up to test because I brought it to the house. And so definitely in the next video, I'm going to hook up the Gatorade bottle again and give it a try because that kind of should be the benchmark for the moment as to how well one of these things should work because the way the Gatorade bottle worked was absolutely incredible. And we need to try and figure out how to duplicate that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, feel free to hit the comment box or come to my website, doogielabs.com. It doesn't require any registration to leave a comment, so you know, I don't track you or anything like that. I just want to hear your feedback, your thoughts, or heck, make a form out of the comment box and discuss it with other people. We definitely need to all work together on this to bring it to the world. So anything you see me develop here or anything else, it's completely open source. Feel free to take it and modify it. You, I, I would love some credit, honestly. You know, give credit where credit's due. And definitely couldn't have done it without watching other people on YouTube. Did I get things from specific places? Um, inspiration, mainly. Or I would answer a question, you know, how do things work under vacuum? Or how does hydrogen cells react under higher pressure, like 50, 60 PSI? So those were all interesting questions that I was able to kind of feed into YouTube in a roundabout way and get my answers. So thank you, all of you who try experiments and things like that. We need to keep doing it and we need to share information. So anyways, until next time, have a good one.